Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com and today we're gonna to continue talking about adjustment layers. On the last video, we took this basic image and we added sort of a darker bluer sky. And we did so without doing any brush strokes. But today what I wanna talk about is the gradient map adjustment layer. This is so cool. So I've talked about this in a couple other videos, but I'm gonna bring it up again because it's just so powerful. So let me start by making a gradient map so if I turn it on and off, you can see that it is replacing the local colors with total grayscale. But if I were to change the colors in the gradient, I'd have very dramatically different effects. So I'm overwriting the original colors with the gradient. So I'll pick this purple to orange effect here. And now the nice thing is that because it is non-destructive, it's non-linear, I can have sort of halfway. So if I lower the opacity to 50%, look what I'm left with. It's not the total blasted out new colors, but it's also not the original colors. It's somewhere in between. And this is extremely powerful because you've probably experimented with something like the photo filter. So I'll make a new one here, photo filter. So here I'm just applying a single color overlay. And this is the same as making a multiply layer and just filling it with the paint bucket. It doesn't have a whole lot of subtlety. What's more interesting to me about the gradient map is that you have multiple colors to work with. So let's adjust the gradient itself a little bit. So I'll click on the effect. And if you've never edited a gradient, this is just one of those skills that you need to learn. So I'll add in another color here in the middle. And maybe I'll make this color sort of a neutral mid-tone here and then I'll tweak the orange a little bit and then I'll tweak the blue a little bit and now I can adjust the position of any of these elements of the gradient and just see what happens so I'm not colorizing uniformly I'm colorizing the darks towards a certain color the lights towards a different color and the midtones towards another color still, any of which I can change at any time for whatever desired effect I'm looking for. So I can confirm that. And then as you remember from the last video, I can continue to control this even further with a mask. So maybe I want to remove this effect from the sky. So I'll use my selection layer here and painting in the thumbnail, I'll just paint a little black to kind of pull this effect back. I want it more in the car and in the foreground than I do in the sky. And then maybe when I look at this, I think, you know what, the windows, they're sort of getting lost. So I'll select where the windows are. I'll do another gradient map. And here, once again, I can pick colors. So let's say I want to pick sort of this bluish color from my image. We have a problem. I'm using the eyedropper, I'm clicking all over the image, and it's not changing from black. So here's a problem that I could not figure out literally for years until someone showed me the other day. Here's the problem. Right now I have the mask thumbnail selected. What I want selected is the adjustment layer. See the difference? So here, the left is the little black and white circle, that's the adjustment layer. The right, that's the thumbnail. So I'll select the adjustment layer itself, and then I'll go into the gradient map. Now when I select a color and I want to use the eyedropper, it works like I'd expect it to. So if you're experiencing an error when you're trying to use the eyedropper tool to pick colors for your gradient, it's probably because you have the mask selected, not the color for the layer. So that's just one of those weird technical issues that I've experienced over and over, and I assume at some point you will too. But really the danger with all this stuff is that you have too much fun with it and that you really blast out your colors. And the secret is subtlety. So if you ever do a gradient map, it generally is useful to pull it way back. So here's a very subtle effect. The highlights are a little warmer. The shadows are a little cooler. I haven't totally blasted out the original image, but I've given it just a little oomph, a little subtlety. And that's where I think adjustment layers are really powerful. Because as you can see, here's the original image, and here's my modified image. Not so different, but it gives it something. Now if you find this stuff interesting in the same way I do, I encourage you to go try out tutorials for photo retouchers. 
because that's who these tools are really designed for. And you're not going to find them as much on digital painting websites. So have fun. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.